I'm like the embodiment of everything that community hates. Progressive liberal with blue hair. So yeah, I imagine it's probably gonna happen again in the future. That'd be my guess. Yeah, him equating you having a conversation or talking about Andrew Tate and like to to him saying stuff about sleeping with your wife was so stupid. Especially lying about it too is the thing that bothers me the most. Like if Molina had actually propositioned him publicly or even privately, I, I think I'd feel a little bit differently, but it's the fact that it's a lie. It doesn't make sense. I think if people are very tied to some kind of political image, them being seen as friends with you is almost like they're tacitly agreeing or endorsing or accepting stuff that you say. Uh, it's not like political image. It's just like social circles. I wish it was as deep as political images, but it's not really. It's just like their friends hate me, so they feel like they have to hate me. <laughs> Apparently, you called me insecure for not wanting a girlfriend that dressed provocatively. You've, you've been talking to Ethan? Um, no, did I say that? All right, it was nice being you, Abbott. You seem pretty cool. Appreciate you. It was a pleasure meeting you. Okay. Have fun. Be careful. Right, bye Don't bye. die. <clears throat> All right. What's up? How you doing? Good, man. So I heard that uh, Sneeko non-apology. Yeah. You know, publicly, it's probably about as much as he can, <laughs> he can do, I imagine. Uh, did, uh, maybe I misheard. Did he not admit that he was doing that for, like, Muslim clout openly? Uh, I mean, that's what he said in the DMs. I think I brought that up. Uh, did he did he admit that openly? I don't remember. Did he I think he that? did. No. That was like really surprising when he said that. I'm like, what a what a loser! <laughs> Imagine being that desperate for the group of ad that you would like quasi throw your friend under the bus, even jokingly, to like get in with them. Like that's so loserish. To me. Yeah, a little disappointing for sure. Yeah, no, but not that surprising. Honestly, you know the Genesis. Um, me and him had collaborated once during the pandemic, like okay. really early on. Mm -hmm. We did a video together because he'd gotten robbed. He got robbed by a guy. Some mm -hmm. guy threw a brick through his window okay. and wanted to fight him. Okay. And he felt really emasculated because like the guy pretty much like being a peeping Tom on <clears throat> on him and his girl having sex. So they left the curtain open. The guy was kind of just staring. And he said something. The guy threw a, a brick through his window. And he said, yo, I'm going to come find you. I'll kill you or whatever. So Sneeko from that point on was like terrified. Didn't know how to handle it. <clears throat> and instead of fighting the dude, which he really wanted to do, he moved away. So I decided to do a video with him. I hit him up. I once talked about it. And I was like, just telling him like, yeah, I feel like not much of a man. I feel like a punk or a bitch. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I understand that feeling. But at the same time, it's like, you don't know this guy. You don't got no weapon. You don't know what this guy is. You told me he's a bit shifty. Like you did the smart thing to be able to protect you and your girlfriend is to leave. Yeah. Obviously you weren't attached to an apartment. If it's an unsafe area and an unsafe place and you can afford to move elsewhere. And that seems like the most sensible thing from someone who's threatening your life. Right. For sure. Yeah. <clears throat> So that was like Genesis. And then we didn't speak again for like a year. And he started streaming. And then I just heard through like somebody hit me up. It's like, yo, Sneak was talking crazy about you online. So I hit him up privately. And I was like, yo, what's going on? I, like, I heard you were talking about me. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, this and that. I'm like, cool. You want to talk about it? He's like, why don't we talk about it on stream? I was like, no, we can just talk about it offline. He's like, no, no, no. We can talk about it on stream. I was like, sure. I think that was a moment that kind of clicked in my head for me. That this guy is like really obsessed with like, I guess, kind of monetizing everything or any disagreement. Mm -hmm. And I think that further became cemented to me, not the first time you brought on Nick Fuentes, but the second, you remember that? The second I did or he did? He did that. Remember we were in a call, it was just me, you and him. Mm -hmm. And then and then I told him like, yo, don't bring on Nick Fuentes again. Like I, I did that the first time, but like you just bring him on randomly when I'm not expecting, like I'm, I'm not rocking with Dick. And literally 30 seconds later, he brings him on. Do you remember that? I don't, I don't. But there's okay. all that, that whole year blurs together for me. Yeah. But anyways, I, I think I kind of do though, because I think you, was it just you, me, him? Was Gideon there as well or? Uh, that time Gideon wasn't there, no. No. But anyways, he brought him on and I just ended up leaving the call. And I remember his editors like Abba runs away from Nick Fuentes or some other bullshit. Oh damn! I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, we'd already had this conversation. Mm -hmm. I thought it was weird that you're bringing on this white supremacist dude to come here and say like he doesn't want mixed people to exist and all this other shit. Uh -huh. well, I let like the first time. I was like, it, it just dawned on me the dude's just a big liability. The dude, he's obsessed with how people perceive him. He's really concerned with making sure he maintains some kind of image mm -hmm. and he doesn't care what he does to the people around him in that process. And so me seeing his behavior with you was just not surprising because it's what I'd seen from him before. So I wasn't disappointed or sad or whatever. It's like, I always thought he was kind of untrustworthy because he's more concerned with how he's perceived than anything else. So, you know, I don't know for you if you were expecting better behavior from him. 
Um, no, I mean, like, it's it's pretty obvious. Like, there's probably going to be missteps in the future, too, because he's, like, obviously, he's very desperate for validation from his new community, and I'm, like, literally, like, the existential, like, I'm, like, the embodiment of everything that community hates, right? Like, Polly Cock that plays video games and is, like, a progressive liberal with blue hair. So, yeah, I imagine it's probably going to happen again in the future. That'd be my guess. Yeah, him equating you having a conversation or talking about Andrew Tate and, like, to, to him saying stuff about sleeping with your wife was so stupid. Especially lying about it, too, is the thing that bothers me the most. Like, if Melina had actually propositioned him publicly or even privately, I, I think I'd feel a little bit differently. But it's the fact that it's a lie. That's, like, the most. Well, he doesn't think it's a lie. I no 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 he knows it's a lie I know it and well, I know cause everything everything said, I know that's not what he that's said what but he like said. he even he even DM'd her like two weeks ago asking if she wanted to come on to do like collab content so he clearly is not and I and I even asked him that one question did every woman that DM you to go on a podcast do you think that they all want to fuck you and he's like obviously he's fucking just talking shit right you know he, he just he came on he's like oh if women DM me it's because they want to fuck in my world that's what that means mm-hmm. and I was like but you out here messaging her it's like what do you even say yeah. Uh, that was, it was just it was a very bizarre thing to watch you guys interact because I was like, what is this line argument? And he knew it was wrong mm-hmm. because he'd asked you before he even uploaded the image beforehand because he was just thinking to himself, like, I understand how this can be perceived. I want to make sure Destiny's cool with it. But for him to go on the podcast and make it seem like it was a real thing when he knew initially it was supposed to be a joke was just weird. Yeah, and, and that's the thing why. On the podcast, for him to come here afterwards and be like, well, she didn't message me. And women, women only. I don't think I think part of him thinks that your wife does want to. I think that's what he actually I don't does. think so. I think he knows you he's full of so? shit. Nah, I think he knows he's full of shit. Because we've we've all um we've like, we've hung out before. Like we've done content. Like I think he knows. Give me a sec. Sure. Right. I think uh, as far as this whole situation goes, um yeah, I mean I think it's to be expected, but not surprising. But is there a part of you that's um feeling different about the whole situation or i know you said you're not surprised by it but it does seem like you're still a bit bothered by it am i crazy um yeah i mean it's always annoying when it happens it's stupid but i mean i think that most of my most of my bridge burnings i think historically have come about as a result of like these kinds of like pressured political differences so i might be on good terms with somebody but they're on a radically different political community and then because they get a lot of pressure from that community they end up having to burn me publicly because it's like oh i'm not friends with that destiny guy he's a he's a or whatever like yeah that's where a lot of my like a lot of my old fallings out from like my far left leaning friends basically came about because of that that doesn't make sense i think if people are very tied to some kind of political image them being seen as friends with you is almost like they're tacitly agreeing or endorsing or accepting stuff that you say uh it's not like political image it's just like social circles i wish it was as deep as political images but it's not really it's just like their friends hate me so they feel like they have to hate me <laughs> it's because they need like well, that I mean, social acceptance if you came out and you're like, you know what, I don't think Russia's that bad, wouldn't that uh, Ukrainian chick also be like, yo, f*** this guy? Yeah, probably, but she's Ukrainian and Russia's committing war crimes against her country right now, so <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Okay. Well, I wasn't... Uh, hold on, let me see here. Let me check. Oh, yeah, yeah, I want to actually bring this up. Apparently you called me insecure for not wanting a girlfriend that dressed provocatively. You've been, you've been talking to Ethan? Um... No, did I say that? What was my quote? Fuck. I'm not gonna go find this shit. I'm not gonna go find <laughs> If I could find the video, I said, uh, I think usually what I say is that like it can stem from insecurity or it couldn't stem from insecurity. Um, the examples I believe I gave on stream were that like, let's say somebody says, I don't want my girlfriend to dress a certain way because I'm worried Ooh. that like a guy's gonna hit on her and she's gonna leave me. That would mean that that feeling that you have is one of insecurity. But if you're sure. like, I don't want my girlfriend to dress a certain way because like we're in a committed relationship with each other and I think that we should kind of reserve those more like provocative aspects of ourselves for within our relationship because that's like the mutual respect that we have for each other. That's not like an insecurity thing. That's a fine boundary. I think you took issue with the fact that I find it disgusting. Um, that's oh, what you said. Maybe that sounds a little bit more judgmental. If you said that, then I'd probably yeah. Find I, you I personally would find it pretty disgusting if I was dating somebody and they were out here dressing incredibly provocatively. But let's oh, wait, not yeah, find wait, it. That's, okay? Well, what uh, you just said, real quick, that was a different thing. If you say that, like you personally, like within your relationship, find it disgusting, well, then that's totally fine. There's no problem with that. But if you say like, oh, I think it's disgusting when other people do it with each other, then that's kind of a little bit different, right? Oh no, I don't care what other people want to do with it. I just wouldn't want my girl dressed like that. What other people want to do and how they, those women want to dress like that's fine. I personally, when I think a girl's like really that 
like out there i don't find it appealing i don't think it's a great thing but i don't care i don't judge them i don't go say anything i just mind my fucking business sure i think that's probably fine but yeah like and okay and i don't know i kept saying dressing provocatively and people were like what does that even mean like you can just google that shit i'm like that's it <laughs> people can wear whatever they wear but i'm just not going outside with anybody dressed like this because am i crazy for saying that apparently um, i was I a lot of people say, what the fuck? I'm like, no, I just don't want to go out with somebody who dressed like that. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Right? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I was made to feel like, oh, there's something wrong with that. I think a lot of people do think it is inappropriate. Um, I think at the heart of this, when the Sebastian guy got online and said those stuff to Ethan, what was your thoughts initially when he was talking about this? The problem is the Sebastian guy is a dumb fuck. That what he's saying might be defensible, but he's not the person to defend it. He's woefully inadequate yeah so i thought i felt like ethan performed better in that conversation not necessarily because i agree with him but because the sebastian dude was just a dumb fuck okay you might have said that for the whole the conversation because i don't i didn't uh, i watched most of it Mm -hmm. i didn't think it was that insightful or interesting but i feel like the guy when they're talking about drop shipping and stuff like that i didn't know much about it enough to agree or disagree with one Mm -hmm. uh but on the topic of like his girlfriend he kept like just saying he was insecure and secure in that portion i just don't understand why that was true did you think that ethan made good points in? not really no but then the guy started saying stuff and it made me think maybe he is insecure like i said it i don't think ethan's argument is particularly good but the other guy didn't seem like he was in a position to defend his position okay all right i guess i was just railing against the idea that people not wanting a partner who dresses any type of way whether it be like dressing like a hood rat or dressing like a very provocative woman or dressing like whatever mm-hmm. is inherently a sign of insecurity i don't know it's just but it seems like we're pigeonholed to that or there's some kind of level of discomfort i got that a lot a lot of people hit me up oh you fucking bastard i was like am i crazy the people like destiny agrees with ethan i was like does he and so i was just curious to hear your thoughts yeah it this is like- just it's like an extension of that culture where it's like for a long time women are kind of like almost oppressively having their clothing standards dictated to them and so now we think that like well the best thing would be for women to be able to wear anything at all and there's actually there's absolutely nothing socially communicated with any type of evidence which is fucking retarded right Wait, why is it retarded? Because obviously we communicate something with the clothing that we wear because we all kind of socially agree upon what certain clothing communicates, whether we like it or not. Um, the perfect example of this, maybe it's a tinge of misogyny, but like, do you remember Dave Chappelle's skit about like... Um, yeah, the, the horse uniform? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. So, I mean, like, we, so whether you like it or not, you, you just, you have to be cognizant of, like, what are you communicating with the clothing that you wear? And it could, you could intentionally do it, right? Like, I'll show up someplace in sweatpants and a t-shirt and be like, oh, you look like a sub. Like, I don't care if you think I look like a sub. That's fine. But if you're going to dress like a whore and you show up in someplace and be like, you look like a whore, then your response has to be, I don't care if you think I look like a whore. Fuck you. It's like, that's fine. But if you say, no, I'm just wearing this because I need to. And I don't think this makes me a whore. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, well, whether or not you are or aren't appearing in a certain way, doesn't really matter what the fuck you say. If I walk around outside with a bunch of swastikas over my shirt and I say, well, I just think these patterns look neat. Everybody's going to look at me like a fucking retard because that's communicating something because socially we've decided what swastikas mean. Same thing with crop tops and mini skirts and whatever else people can wear. You no, know? I would argue probably those things have a bit more ambiguity to them. Um, I would argue they do s- still say something. I was interesting because even at one point he's like, I don't want my wife dressing like a porn star. I'm like, well, why not? Well, what's the difference? For you, your line's at porn star. For other people, their line is that fucking dress with the titties out. Like everyone got their own line. And like we could agree on what those extremes are mm-hmm. and what's acceptable or not. But on one end of the spectrum, you got burkas, right? Like you got somebody who can't show anything. And the other one, you got a girl who's walking around with pasties. Like, Everyone's going to have their differences. I just don't understand the necessity of labeling someone who's not okay with one end of the sexual liberation line as insecure <clears throat> when you're just on the different end. Everyone's got their own line. I yeah, guess. yeah, I agree. And it's important to recognize that because it gets really stupid when people are like they pretend that they have like the objective line. Fuck. On one of Farah's clips on, t- on uh, Fresh and Fit, they actually go back and forth on this, and it's this exact com- it's this exact conversation of like, if a woman wears this thing, then she is like objectively a whore. And I was like, well, what do you mean objectively? Like, some people would call you a whore for you know, like you said, like not wearing like a hijab or something, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah. who are you to decide where the objective standard of what is or isn't a whore? But the reality is, it's going to be somewhat, um, it's going to be relative to the society you're in, right? I would say that even you got a line. Uh, well, yeah, probably. I don't want somebody like like. Yeah, I know exactly what that line is. You want me to tell you what it is? Yeah, it's going to be wearing a shirt saying I'm Hassan's number one fan. <laughs> or no, what do you think? What is it? It's, it's women dressed like they live in Miami. Okay, 
I don't care about women dressing like they live in Miami. I care about women pumping plastic into their bodies so they look like they live in Miami. <laughs> nah, mean, nah, nah, nah. Those two go together. Don't even lie. Those outfits in Miami are crazy. I, I don't care. I, I think they're fucking hot. Um, the, the problem is, <laughs> listen, I like a slutty look a girl with fucking everything all out and everything. I just don't like it when I can't tell if her ass is real or if it got lipoed out of her fucking stomach or something, okay? That's like the thing that you're Wait, why does that bother you? I don't know if it's a, maybe it's an actual phobia or something, but I have a really hard time touching shit that's like altered and I know it is and it feels like inhuman to me. Like I can't, like if there's a girl like fake tits, I can't put my hands on them at all. It just feels very fucking weird to me. And then What about when you're touching the face and it's caked up in makeup? Um, even that's actually pretty weird. Um, I have a hard time like it because I like to be like affectionate. So like touching people's faces and rubbing people's faces is really fun. But if they've got like a ton of makeup, I don't like to like, I don't want to like do that. And then I like I take my can't. fingers away. I'm yeah. sorry, I can't. I, I, I honestly, I could never see you mm -hmm. walking around with a Miami woman. I don't think I could ever see you walking down the street every day with Miami. That's and true, I but that's going to be more I, her preference than mine. I don't think a Miami woman would want to walk down the street with somebody that looks like me. No, no, no. Okay. Keep it a stack. Let's say, uh -huh. okay. Uh, you know, let me, let me, let yeah, me pull up. stack it up. Let's go ahead. So I think if we have a good reference and we have a good image in our heads, then I think we can both just enjoy it. Okay. All right. Like, let's say this is the outfit. Okay. okay. I'd be so proud. I'm going to send it to you. You can put it up on screen so that even chat can be part of this whole thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> put that shit up on screen, bro. Hell yeah. So you're saying that like if Melina or if some girl that I was with, um, it was often dressing like that. I don't think I, I'd be curious to see if you would be able to handle that. Do you think? Be honest, your heart hearts. Yeah, I I don't think I care. Hold on, fuck, it's not loading on my fucking screen. Wait, is this link dead that you just gave me? Oh, there it is. I yeah, I wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah, go for it. Fuck it. Okay. Like the grossest thing about this outfit to me is the maybe the boob. Is this Kim Kardashian have fake boobs? They look kind of fake, but they could just be really well supported. But I think these are fake, right? Of course they're, they're definitely fake. Yeah. And then I don't know if the thighs or booty. I don't know any part of this fucking photo is real. That's the thing that like bothers me the most. <laughs> I mean, don't be wrong. She looks good. It's just a lot. That's all I'm saying. That's a lot. Okay. We're going out to dinner and you're out here in your fucking shirt and your jeans. And she dressed like that. Fuck it, hell yeah. I want yeah, people to think I'm sugar daddy as fuck. Hell yeah, fuck them. Hey, hey. Hey, listen, everyone got their thing. Everyone got their thing. I, I think I would be uneasy. I think that would draw so much attention. Mm -hmm. And it would just be like so unnerving. It's just a lot. Mm -hmm. But hey, everyone, I, I just, I question whether you would, but you claim you would, so I'll just have to take your word at it. Sure. You can try to get some girl I'm with to dress up like that and see if you can catch me in a, in a little fib sometime, okay? I'm about to hit up Melina and start buying her outfits. I'm like, yo, walk around with Steven. True. Right? And record oh the... God. Record the interaction. Yeah. See how much he can handle. See if he does any double takes. Like, you're going to wear that? I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. If I think I've also noticed this. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, I can't really say that. I don't know. Really what? But yeah. Maybe it's just like a lot of the women that you've been involved with have a little bit more of a down to earth, like kind of, maybe they might be a bit alternative, mm -hmm. but none of, none of them have been very like out there, out there. Um, yeah, I agree. That's generally the case. I'm very, but that's that. I think that's less what I'm comfortable with and more just like the type of person and the looks. Like, I really like like quote unquote like girl next door look, or like it's like a relatively nerdy girl, but they're not like super obese or anything like that. Like, I, like that's like the type of look that I, that I enjoy. And then there's like a huge spectrum that exists in there. Like, I'm not generally like when I see like pictures like that, this might sound like a, a lie or a cope or something, but like most of it is just not very attractive to me. Like I wouldn't even jerk off to pictures like that. Like I'd be much more likely to jerk off to like a girl who's like wearing like an oversized t-shirt or like a girl in like sweatpants and like uh, slippers or whatever. That like that kind of image is more attractive to me than the very, is very, very that, dolled up shit. Is it that you're attracted to that or mm -hmm. is that just because you feel like it's gonna be reciprocated, you're already self-selecting in a way? I genuinely just don't find it very attractive. It's not like I don't masturbate to porn thinking that way. I've never like asked a girl to dress up that way. Like I've never, there's just never any, it's just, I just don't have an attraction to that look. But I also think that like, I, I feel like I grew up in a time period where we were coming off the Pamela Anderson stuff and what was being pushed was the very hyper like girl next door kind of look that that became popular mm. for a while in like the, t in the early 2000s, but. Mm. Okay. I know sometimes I hear, it, I, I hear people say like, oh, I'm more into like, um, nerdy type of women and things like that and mm -hmm. i just believe that for a lot of them what's happening is that they're just it's all they can get on being to the people that they think would most likely like them back sure and and that's just what's happening but i guess for you maybe it is something bigger oh my bad my bad <laughs> but anyways <laughs> I, I, they're, they're getting intense with this practice uh -huh. but i just want to bring that up i'll let you go now okay i love you be careful buddy all right peace brother bye oh do you know what that guy sounds like <laughs> i'm gonna <c> <laughs>
Oh shit. 